Welcome back to Who Chose. Quick update today, I'm just going to show you what's been going on with the place because I've started a bunch of new systems, I've got a heap of things I want to tell you about and I don't have much time. So let's get into it. First of all, behind me, you can see that I've implemented a NFT and this is a 90mm pipe NFT similar to the first NFT that I built and I've done this because it was a quick and easy setup and I had a bunch of beefsteak tomatoes that I wanted to plant out. Now this is running directly into my old reservoir which was for the Beto buckets. It looks like this. It's just returning straight from the 90mm pipe and I'm really excited to show you how this system goes. It's topping up from a float valve, that one there, from the 1000 litre res, which is behind the greenhouse. It's the same setup here as it was for my Beto buckets, which I have retired at the moment. As you can see there, there's nothing where they were. This is the super simple strawberry system. It's going okay. I'm not particularly happy with the amount of root space that these strawberries have. So I think we're gonna redesign this system with root space in mind. Here I have the NFT and it's planted out with seedlings, as you can see in all the holes. And they're just in our cheap cotton wool propagation material and there is nothing more to it. It's just those seedlings placed within our NFT in the cotton wool propagation media. And I'm not babying them at all. So as you can see here, we've got really small seedlings and they've been lasting through the heat because it kind of acts as propagation dome. This in here remains really humid and the seedlings are exposed to light from above. So it encourages them to pop out through that hole. And then when they're ready, they do so and start growing as normal. Back here is some more mature lettuce that is in the same technique and you can see those there and they're doing really well. Okay, so we're outside. There's not really much to add about the citrus systems, so I'll leave those. We've got the ginger and the turmeric systems, which are going crazy as usual, um, but I'll have a video on those very soon once they are fully mature and start to die back and I can get a weight on those rhizomes. The float box was hit recently um, with a heat wave and well, all of it was hit with the heat wave and my reservoir ran out and it caused a heap of death of the leaves because the nutrient ran out within the system and uh, it was not pretty. Here we have the dragon fruit and I am pretty excited to share this one with you because this is what I've been waiting for for so long. You can see here we have our first dragon fruit flower and I am super excited. I've got multiple time-lapse cameras pointing at it because I want to catch that flower flowering for the first time and it's not the only flower either so we've got here another flower and I am fairly certain that if we come over here you can see the very start of a flower coming off this limb here as well so exciting stuff um, I have been waiting with anticipation for this moment and I'll have footage for you soon uh, I've got a combination of different plants waiting to be planted out into active hydroponic systems at the moment i'm just top watering them so here we have a finger lime coffee and passion fruit behind them is the pineapple hydroponic system and you can see how green those tops are and i'm actually really happy with this method of the grow spike watering from below and topping up from the rain gutter grow system so Yes, so far. Uh, behind me, I have just set up today, infinite crack key. There's no tubing connected at the moment. These are all just crack key at the moment, but soon, once these start utilizing the nutrient, I will actually have them topping up automatically from float valves. And as you can see, I have cucurbits in them. This is a pumpkin. And there is a quick look underneath for you. 
So this is the outdoor strawberry system and it is looking pretty sad. Uh, these bags, they just heat up too much out in this no UV protection at all area. So I'll be retiring this system soon and I'll be replacing it with a new idea that I've had. Over here we have the rain gutter grow systems, the original rain gutter grow systems and they're going really well. I've been pulling zucchinis off these guys. Uh, the turmeric is going crazy. There's ginger behind the turmeric. Back here, there is a ton of pests throughout this system, but I'm just letting it produce as much as it possibly can without me intervening, and I'm happy to let that happen. Okay, so we're gonna move from the greenhouse and the outside systems into the studio. Come and have a look inside the studio I've got a ton of new reviews, new systems, indoor systems to show you. Okay, so I have been doing a little bit of work in here. So today I was obviously playing with the pumpkins outside and I propagated those in my DIY shelving, which has been going really well. I actually would recommend using these lights and the shelving system if you want a cheap propagation area that's indoors. These are micro tomatoes grown in the Beto buckets, the 3D printable Beto buckets that I have available on my Patreon that I released uh, a month or two ago. And they've been time-lapsing really nicely. I have been coming along and pollinating them because the fan may not be doing enough pollination work, so this is an ultrasonic or a sonic toothbrush. Um, the pollination devices that you buy online, they're actually quite expensive, but all they are is this, and as you can see, it just turns on and vibrates. I'm not sure you can see that vibration, but if I put this behind one of the flowers, you can see the flower itself. So place it behind the flowers and the pollen vibrates to the front of the flowers and they have both a male and a female part so the pollen actually self-pollinates the flower um, and the wind will also help the pollen move across to other flowers from other plants as well. This is the, the vertical shelved NFT hydroponic system and it is doing way better than I could have hoped for actually. Um, you can see here, it is producing a ton of lettuce. Each of these racks holds 14 lettuce. So if you were to eat two lettuce per day uh, and take two lettuce off and then replace it with seedlings, you would have three weeks worth of lettuce. And that is kind of perfect because if you take two lettuce out, replant them, week one, week two, week three, and by the end, you'll actually have a full grown lettuce as you start to harvest the first row of lettuce again. So this is kind of like a perpetual lettuce machine. All you have to do is maintain the nutrient, leave the system running and continue eating lettuce really. Um, Two lettuce a day would be absolutely plenty for most people because like, I don't think I would eat that much lettuce. I don't think I could eat that much lettuce if I had a second person. I think that it'd be substantially enough for most people in a couple scenario. This is a solid system design and I haven't had any problems with the roots clogging up and I don't think I will for some time either. So I'll just take out a lettuce to sort of show you what the root scenario looks like. Here we go, I'll take this one out and disturb the whole system. There we go, you can have a look at that. The roots, they're not taking up much space at all. You can see, you can see there, that's pretty much the extent of the roots for a single lettuce and comparative to the pipe, nah. Not really much at all. We've got plenty of extra space. Even if the lettuce bulks up to double that size, I don't think we'll have a problem. I will continue to time-lapse and I will continue this experiment for at least another week. 
and I will let you know how it goes. These lights are performing amazingly. You can see the difference in the growth with the light intensity because of the style of lettuce that's here. The greener on the outside is less light intensity and the purple on the inside is more light intensity. So the Spider Farmer SF600 is performing really nicely. At this height, it's giving a really nice, even distribution of light that is perfectly suited to this amount of channels. The two channels spread this distance apart. I can't explain how happy I am with how this system's turned out. And I'm just gonna go ahead and recommend if you like it and you wanna build it, go and build it because it is working perfectly. I'll have that time lapse out for you very soon so that you can check it out in a dedicated video. Okay, so down here I have a review that I'm doing called the Hydro Bucket. And it's a bucket that basically allows you to do deep water culture, crack key, all of the water culture hydroponics, and it allows you to do them in a fuss free manner. It's performing really well. It gives you a ton of options that make your life a lot easier. And I'll have that review out for you very soon. These are botaniums. And I love the design of these. Uh, they're another review coming out very soon. And it's just a reservoir, a pump, a feeder and a pot on top with some grow media and it's simple and it's working fantastically so far there you have it that's a quick walk around the studio the greenhouse and the outdoor hydroponic systems a quick update on what's happening around the place and what i've been up to and i hope you enjoyed this episode of who chose happy hydroponicking and I'll see you next time. <laughs>